Hello, I'm Eric Kogafloopoulos here again. Good morning, happy Sabbath day. Hope you're all em embracing the Sabbath. I think we've been embracing the Sabbath now for last fucking 200 odd days, whatever. Embracing the Sabbath means you do fuck all. No technology, but I guess by definition, I'm breaking the Sabbath code, but what are you gonna do, though? My eyes are blind, but I can see. Fuck it. Out. Need to get some fucking vinyl on my hands, fucking quick snappy. I know you can buy shit online and stuff like that. You can just fucking a few clicks away and get it delivered to you, but it's not the same. Vinyl, you gotta go to the fucking store, you gotta flick through and find the gem. It's a treasure hunt. It's all about the hunt, it's all about the fucking. That's what I hunt, man. I hunt fucking vinyl. And then when you find it, it goes, oh. Oh, hello. And you go, oh, hello. You're coming home with me. That's how I discovered Freeze, Fire and Water. Fuck, what an album. If you haven't heard that, man, like Molly Meldrum used to say, do yourself a favor, go fucking have a listen to Free, Fire and Water. The band's name is Free, eh? The album's name is Fire and Water. They got that one classic song on there, all right now. Everyone's heard that. But there's other fucking mad songs on that album. 1970. Listen to that album and understand that the musicians on that album, Paul Rogers, Simon Kirk, Andy Fraser, Paul Kossoff, they were kids there. I think uh, Andy Fraser, the bassist, was about 16 or 17 when they recorded that. Paul, Co uh, Paul Rogers would have been 20 or 21 at the most. And that was the age range for, for all of them. How the fuck do you make music there? That timeless, that world weary, at such a young age. And I think, like, have we gotten wiser but more infantilized at the same time is that possible i don't know have we have we become wiser or do we just have more knowledge of stuff because that's not that's not the same as wisdom go look at all your fucking classic albums even fucking aussie sabbath their first album aussie was what fucking 21 so all those fucking like classic Sabbath songs that you hear, even from like from from Paranoid, really, War Pigs, Paranoid, all those songs, you're listening to kids fucking playing them there. 21, 22, 23 years old. Adam my like Hendrix was 27 when he died there. Jim Morrison, Janice, 27 when they died. Let alone you know, thinking about how old they were when they recorded their fucking, all their iconic songs. When Jim Morrison was singing The End, he would have been 21 or 22, something, somewhere around there. Do the math. So if Hendrix died, what was it, September 1970? He was 27. Was it around there, I think? I don't know. But he played Woodstock, August 69. So he would have been, what, 26, 25? A fucking kid there. Fuck. These people made timeless music. We could go on and on and on. I think I will. When Pink Floyd recorded uh, Dark Side, they would have been what in their middle, late twenties, the late twenties maybe. Holy fuck, man! I still feel like a fucking kid. Those people were making music that was beyond their years, beyond their years. How is that possible? 
how is that possible to for 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 a kid to have that world weariness and create music that feels new but also timeless like it's been around for thousands of years Jackson Brown if you ever listened to Jackson Brown he's another fucking legend I went in through I went through a whole Jackson Brown phase and I still love I still love listening to his music especially Late for the Sky that album and that song fucked me up his first four five albums brilliant But he has a song on, it appeared on his second album called These Days. It was covered before he recorded it. It was covered by Nico and um, I think it's it appears in a, fucking, what's that filmmaker's name? Man? Wes Anderson film. I forget which one. Anyway, her version of it. The song called These Days. And the last line of the song goes, don't confront me with my failures, I've not forgotten them. Don't confront me with my failures, I have not forgotten them. Sounds like a 60 year old looking back on his life and going, I still don't, I'm still, I'm still uh, tormented by all my fuck ups and my life and everything else, yeah? He was 16 when he wrote that. Fifteen even. Were people older back then? More mature? Have we become just fucking young punks, but not mature? Like not more mature, if I should do. Uh, fucking losing it, though. In Corinthians, I remember that famous uh, that that the uh, famous and favorite uh, excerpt from Corinthians that the priests uh, or that gets read out not by priests usually by readers at at, at the church during um, uh, you know Catholic Anglican weddings I think it is the letter from St. Paul to the Corinthians, you know, if I speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing. I think I've spoken about this before. If I speak with all the eloquence of angels and I have a knowledge, if I basically saying, if I don't, if I live in love, if I don't live in love, then I'm just a fucking, it's, 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 it's all nothing. It's all for nothing. So in part of that passage is saying, if I could know everything, understand everything, all the knowledge, have all the knowledge, yes, understand everything else, but without love, now what the fuck's it all for? And that's a hard thing to, to, to acknowledge, to hear, to understand. Because then your ego, my ego goes, oh yeah, I get that. That's knowledge again. It's very hard to live in love. Because uh, it leaves us, it leaves us vulnerable. But these musos, artists generally, put themselves on the line in a different, in a different capacity. And that's not to say that their fucking love lives or whatever, or the, the way they live their personal lives is is perfect. It's anything but. But we reap the benefits of that. Fuck it. 
timeless music. And we look up to we look up to these musos or these artists, or some of us, some of us do, or we you know, idolise them and, and, and whatnot and the music has a very strong connection with our it's like the soundtrack to our lives and we, we have uh, very strong memories that are connected to the music and everything else. And maybe when we heard the music for the first time, we were young, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, maybe even younger. And we looked up to them, like I said, but they would only have been when they recorded that music, five, six, seven, eight years older than us, maybe. It's a kind of a hard thing to, 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 to comprehend. But we look up to them. When I first heard uh, Sabbath, when I first heard Paranoid, I might not have even been 16 yet, I might have been 15. And I was around 1990, I hadn't had my, my 16th birthday yet. Let's say I was 15. So when Ozzy Osbourne recorded that, when he sang that, when he recorded it, he would have been, like I said before, 21, 22. He wouldn't have been that much older than me. So the age gap is really small. But the, the gap between where, where we are at the time and where we place these artists, artists in our imagination is, it's another, it's another universe. Time, you know, time, age, distance. What the fuck is that? I don't know. We look back on things, moments in history or whatever, and they seem so distant to us because we see documentaries about times and places and, and everything else. And it seems like another lifetime away, another world away, another universe away. But coming up to my birthday, I'm not ashamed to admit that I was, I was still, I was on this earth. I was alive during the last year of the Vietnam War. I was on this earth. That's fucking crazy, though. I was on this earth while Elvis was still alive. I was on this earth while John Lennon was still alive. I was here for that. But because I don't remember it, and I know about it through news articles and you know, documentaries and popular culture, there's a distance to it. But I was around for that. That blows my fucking mind today. Have a think about it with yourself. See if that's relevant for you. It probably is. It probably is. I don't know if you if you're watching this and you're born in the late nineties. If someone says to you, you know, 
I saw Nirvana at the at the palace now, and the palace is no longer there. Or I saw, you know, I was there when Nirvana played the the first Big Day Out. And you're watching this game. What the fuck's a Big Day Out? Oh, forget about it. I don't think it's the same. Now, people have said that to me, like, you know, I was at a, at one of these fucking big day outs or sound wave, one of those a few years back, and I was walking around with my Sabbath t-shirt, as per usual. Someone walked up to me, an old geezer, and he goes, oh, I saw uh, Black Sabbath at Festival Hall in 1970, whatever it was. And I went, fucking hell, I don't you saw him here at Festival Hall. These things happened. I was driving down which, whichever road it is. I think it might be Kuyong Road. Or, or, is it Kuyong Road? I don't know. And I went past fucking Kuyong, the, the, t the, the tennis uh, stadium there. And I was all with a particular someone. And I said... Led Zeppelin played here. Nah, Kyo. These places are iconic. And if they, I think they came in 75, which means I was around for that. That's fucking crazy. What is our relationship with time and age? There's a magic to a lot of these songs that have stood the test of time. Because they don't die. These songs don't die. Which gets me thinking, were they, have they always been around in the ether somewhere? And did they just come through this, uh, this artist? Not to take away from the credit that the artist deserves from creating that particular piece of music. It just feels like there's a timeless quali quality to them. I don't know. And even now, I listen to that same music. I'm fucking twice the age of these cunts when they fucking recorded it. But I've still in my head fucking idolized them like they were, like they're, you know. But the music has an element to it that when you listen to it you go how the fuck did they do that where did those ideas come from don't confront me with my failures I've not forgotten them what am I like that's intense <laughs> 